Hi, I'm Jesse McCready with Animodule. Check out my modules at animodule.com. I'm just, well, I did it. I burn out the secondary. Finally had something to weld, a project to use a welder for, because why are you going to build a welder? I didn't have anything to weld, I just wanted to see if it worked. Finally had something, that suicide machine, I'll post the fail video of that sometime or another. But uh, when I was welding it, welding the, uh, the half-assed flange bearing, or bearing flange or whatever, the uh, secondary coil on this microwave oven transformer welder took a dive on me. I can't blame it. I just, I mean, <coughs> well, for what I paid for it, I guess. But luckily, the primary didn't burn up. Uh, I think I dinged it up with a screwdriver a little bit. So I got about halfway what I got. Sixteen reps, and I thought, ah, oh, you might like to join me. See, I just got paint sticks here. I was using shims before while I was wrapping it up. Now, I recommend you try this at home with your children, because it's good, clean fun. Just make sure you wear your lens when you're welding. I guarantee you'll learn something, even if it's, uh, don't, <laughs> don't try to cobble together a welder if you don't know what you're doing. Or, spend the money when it's important. <laughs> Obviously I haven't, because here I am, round two. You know, I knew something... I knew it wasn't going to last because all I had handy when I put it together was 12 gauge wire. Uh, luckily, my cool neighbor, Tony, what do you say, Saba Computers, gave me, where is it? He gave me this reel of 10 gauge primary wire. Purple too. That's, you can't ask for much more. purple for Samuel L. Jackson level of cool if I put this together and it doesn't eat itself all over again I actually um I don't know I've got a I've got a higher wattage so you put a little overbend on there got I got those capacitors and those bridge rectifiers and I'm gonna hook them up. Well, you know, let's let's see if this runs without eating itself for a little bit first. So I got some big capacitors and some heavy duty bridge rectifiers and a switch. And we're gonna see. Oh, get out of my way there. We're gonna see. Oh. How many loops did I go? I'm forgetting to mark them, huh? It's uh I think I just went around one time. Yeah, probably. Talking so much you lose track. I don't know how many uh how many wraps I got. Cause when the other side eats itself, and hopefully still leaves the primary, then I'll have to do the same thing again with it. Oh yeah, but I got a got a switch so I can switch back and forth between AC and DC. My part is I don't know anything about welding, so I am not exactly sure why that's desirable. I just managed to get a couple of sparks off a six zero one three rod, I sixty thirteen, and get a couple piss poor welds and. Well, I want more. 
So we'll find out. Maybe this 10 gauge will stand the test. You know, a lot of the YouTube videos and instructions have guys cutting cutting these cores at the top and then wrapping them up neat on like a little form. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't ring right with me. Then you epoxy them together and weld them. I mean, I guess you can see the weld line here. I don't know. It just it doesn't. Well, I've got the patience for this. I guess maybe they, maybe they know something I don't. Could could that take less time? No, oh, it doesn't matter. Can't take that much less time. See, I'm cruising right along here. I got two reps just in the, uh, how long we been chatting? 30 minutes? 45 minutes? <laughs> just wrap it around and jam your paint stick in. And when they... That it gets to be too tight for a paint stick. I'll start using the shims again. Oh, mark it. Don't forget. There we go. 18. I guess I'm just going for 21. Why 21? I, I don't know. It sounds right. You want enough volts to create the arc. Just we'll find out if that's right or not. Oh yeah, and then I think the other one is wrapped. 18 times? 24 times? Something. I guess we'll find out. I guess the two sides on the 220 want to match each other. Or 240, should I say. They want to match each other. Or one's going to be drawing more current. Uh oh. See ya soon. Oh, that was my lovely wife. Where was I? Oh, I marked this. We're going around again. I was blabbering about something 240 volts. The two transformers being evenly matched so one doesn't eat itself. I don't know if that's really how it works. But that's how it works in my imagination. One is pulling more current than the other, then the, it's going to try to pull the other transformer up. And it's going to burn out. That's so why, you know, if you miss this one, you'll probably get to see a so you take two, <laughs> take two sooner than later. Oh, mark it. 19. Yeah, I got those capacitors in the switch. I mean, funny thing is I need, a, I need an on switch too right now. I'm just turning on at the breaker. I mean, that can't be safe. What if I got to turn it off and reach over it? Well, you think the breaker would trip? Well, you would hope that the breaker would trip. Twenty, let's call it twenty-one. Yeah, they're saying it gets pretty difficult around eighteen. Eighteen was fine and dandy. Let's say twenty-one or twenty. Twenty. So that's it. The more wraps I give it, the more voltage it'll put out, but the less current it will put out. That's it. The microwave transformer on the primary is wound 100 times. So theoretically, you get well, a microwave is supposed to put. It wants to put out low voltage and high current. So. 
where it would strike that and reverse it. Low voltage, high current. Yeah, yeah, strike that and reverse it. So the top, the one you cut off, is wound about a million times. So you cut that off. And you rewire it with thick wire. And far less than a million times. Like I said, I think... Uh, 21 feels right and we're getting pretty stuffed full. I could probably get another five or six out of it But then you get less current Oh, There you go. See there's no way I can fit a paint stick in there. Let's jam a shim. Can I still get a shim in there? I'm too weak Can I push this through all right Maybe it's getting a little difficult so all right, we shall persevere. And it's probably good, but I've got all this wire left. I hate to not wrap it around there. So the 12 gauge doesn't cut it for more than a few welds at least. We'll see if this 10 gauge does. It's purple. I got a good feeling about that. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, I hope you all can't see my ancient phone there. That's an obsolete text message. You think I'd be polite enough to turn my phone off? But you thought wrong. Market twenty. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to get one more in here. Like I said, if I was determined, I could get another five or so. What we do. There you go, I found a spot. I guess we can't be as neat and tidy now. You just gotta get it through where it'll go through. Remember this, uh, this copper wire is starting to get work hardened by now too. And you don't want it breaking. That's how you would make taps for it. If you wanted to be able to set different voltages and currents, you would cut the wire at different points and run that out to a multi multiple pole switch, like a rotary switch, something. And then that would pick it up wherever the amount of turns was. So you wrap it once, turn the rotary switch down there, and you got a ton of current and one volt. And what this is not, I have to work smarter, not harder. Come here, just get on through here. All right, I think 21 is gonna be it. And then you could use that as a spot welder. So I got two microwave oven transformers in reserve. So maybe I'll build a spot welder. Never really felt much need for a spot welder. Come here. There's a little cooperation here. There we go. Come on, get on through. It's a trick. Just work it through a little, a little bit at a time. Once I can get a grip on her, she'll go. You know, I would do this on my, uh, 
my bench vise. I got it set up on a it's set up on a log down in the garage in my shop. Man, it is cold there. I think it's probably 15 degrees outside. It might not be below freezing in the shop, but it ain't balmy neither. So I'm not really trying to hang out there. What do you got there? I guess there's not much need for a shim here. So we keep it compact, but I think this is the last hurrah. We'll get it. We'll just find a little find a little opening and work with it. Come it. Come it. And just feed it through. So it still has a little oh no. If I don't bend it, it still have a little stiffness if you can just grab a three quarters of an inch or something. And push it there. You I felt something moving. All right, good. Add a girl. There we go. There I see it. Come here. Nope. No. You also got to make sure you don't you don't scab up your primary because that'll. You know that that wire is coated with enamel. And if you scrape the enamel and it touches itself, there, it won't be happy. You probably won't be happy either, unless you like sparks and uh, there's some appeal to that. Twenty-one. I'm going to call that good. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Jesse McCready. I'm with Animodule. Check us out at animodule.com.